Thank you very much for Mr. Sudarli. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to invite the chair of this international public lecture to deliver the agenda report. Please welcome Mrs. Nurul Aulia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, Om Swastiastu, Nama Budaya, Salam Kebajikan. Good morning and Ohayo Gozaimas. The Honorable, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to convey my warm welcome and thank you to the Honorable Guest, the Honorable Dean of Faculty of Social and Political Science, Sriwijaya University, the Honorable Vice Dean, the Honorable Guests, Professor Yukiko Kuramoto, PhD, Mr. Mr. Otake-san, and Bapak Dr. Insinyur Dida Heriadi Salia, MA, and the lecturer and the participants here. The Honorable Ladies and Gentlemen, the topic of this public lecture is about gender mainstreaming and public-private partnership. And this topic will be delivered by Professor Yukiko Kuramoto-sensei from Rikyo University. A brief explanation that uh, Rikyo University is one of the top global university in Japan, and it's located in Tokyo. And this event will not be held without the collaboration between Sriwijaya University and also Rikyo University. This is a hybrid uh, public lecture and this is uh, in this offline uh, we held in Junaini Mukti conference building in Palembang campus Sriwijaya University and through Zoom meeting. There are approximately 90 uh, participants in this room and it's about 170 participants in virtual zoom meeting and the majority of the participants in this room are from faculty of social and political science Sriwijaya University especially from graduate school of a public administration and then uh, department of a public administration department of sociology Department of uh, Communication Science and also Department of International Relations. I do hope that this event will strengthen the partnership between Rikyo University and Sriwijaya University. Also, I hope that this event will be able to add valuable knowledge in our understanding about gender issue and also public-private partnership. To conclude, thank you very much for your participation. May God protect and bless us abundantly. Thank you very much. Good morning, Selamat pagi, and Ohayo gozaimasu. Thank you very much for Mrs. Nurul Aulia. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to listen to the opening remarks that will be delivered by the Vice Dean of Academic Affairs from the Faculty of Social and Political Sciences of Sriwijaya University. And we would like to invite the Dean to officially open the public lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Haji Azhar SH MSC LLM. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat pagi. 
In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, peace and salutation to the noble Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and his household, his companions, and his faithful followers until at the end of the time. The, hon the honorable guest speaker, Professor Yukiko Kuramoto, Professor at the Graduate School of Social Dis Design Studies and College of Sociology, Rikyu University, Japan. The honorable, the honorable guest, Mr. Otaki from Center for Global Human Resources Department, Rikyu University. The honorable guest, Professor Dr. Ingenu Didaheria Disaya MA from National Planning Agency, Republic of Indonesia. Thank you, Prof. Dida. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the collaboration between Rikyu University and uh, Srijaya University because of Professor Dida help us to do that. Thank you once again, Prof. Dida. Dear head of uh, department, we have here the, the head of department, uh, Secretary of Department of Public Administration. Uh, we have uh, lecturers from department, from communication, the head of department of sociology, and the head of department of international relations. And also we have also study program coordinator from what we call Master of Public Administration and Sociology. All lecturers and students as well as the committee. First and foremost, uh, I'm pleased to extend my warmest welcome to Professor Yukiko Kuramoto for giving a public lecture this coming, this morning. It is an honor for us to have Professor Kuramoto come and give a lecture entitled Gender Mainstreaming and Global Private Partner, Public Private Partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, my beloved students and fellow lecturers, these public lectures provide a valuable opportunity for us as lecturers and students, researchers, to, to have a new experience from Japan by, in which uh, carried out by Professor Kuramoto this morning. It is envisaged that intellectual discourse will result in the future collaboration between two universities like a student exchange, probably research or journal or seminar or also as well as conference in the future. Maybe for some of uh, us may still be wondering what is gender mainstreaming and what does it has to do with partnership. In this context, gender mainstreaming doesn't necessarily, necessarily refer to gender that we have no day by day like feminism or masculine or male or female. In here, probably the definition of gender mainstreaming is that it is the public policy concept uh, of assessing the implication for people different gender of a planned policy action, including legislation and program. What does it that have to do with partnership? How important is it? Why it is important? The answer probably because gender mainstreaming ensure that policy making and legislative work is of a higher quality and has a greater relevance of society because it makes policies respond more effectively to the need of citizen, women, men and girls and boys. Ladies and gentlemen, after we understood the context and definition for gender mainstreaming, we have to understand that what is public-private partnership. As you may know, public-private partnership is a long-term arrangement between the government and private sector institution. After all, that brief explanation, I hope that now you can, we can understand and start to wonder why we are discussing about those two things today. What do they have in common? Are they, effect, are they affecting each other? If so, how and why? For that reason alone, I really hope that you pay attention to the material that will be explained later by Professor Kuramoto this morning. I'm sure uh, we will have fruitful and rewarding exchange today. I wish you every success with this important public lecture. 
and I look forward to learning about the, out, the outcome. Finally, I would like to congratulate the organizing committee for their tremendous effort this morning and yesterday in organizing this event. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that public lecture will be a success. Recording uh, in progress. Before I conclude and open this uh, public lecture, I'd like to say that uh, uh, actually today this uh, public lecture will be opened by our dean, but because uh, uh, our dean has uh, another uh, another activities like uh, graduation uh, ceremony, so she has to attend a company rector in the graduation ceremony place. So he said he is very sorry, Professor Kuramoto, Professor Dida Otake, and all but participants who are attending this public lecture. By saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I open this public lecture with the theme Gender Mainstreaming and Public-Private Partnership. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, sir, for the opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite the Vice Dean to Hanover, the token of appreciation to our keynote speakers, and we will have a photo session with our keynote speakers as well. So please, uh, to the keynote speakers and of course the Vice Dean, you are welcome to come on stage. Okay. okay, now we would like to invite to all of the distinguished guests to come on stage so we could take a picture with our keynote speaker. To all of the participants who joined this agenda through Zoom or online, you could please uh, on cam so we can take a picture with all of the audiences, both offline and online. Okay, we are going to take a picture in three, two, one. Okay, once more, three, two, one. Okay, maybe we could take a picture with a visit menyapa pose. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you could please have a seat. Oh, okay, so I'm sorry, we are going to take a picture with all of the audiences in here. Yeah. So all of the audiences, guys, you could please bring your best pose. Silakan Bapak Ibu sekalian, Bapak Ibu dosen yang mungkin masih di belakang boleh mengambil posisi ke depan.
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. three, two, one. Oke, okay. another pose, fisik menyapa. Ladies and gentlemen. Oke, okay. in three, two, one. Oke, okay. thank you very much. Oh, 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 once again, oh. It's not enough for two picture. Oke, okay. Give your best pose and best smile. In three, two, one. Okay, once more, guys. Three, two, one. Yeah. Oh. Okay, once again, we're so sorry. We're going to take a lot of picture from camera. Um, to all of the audiences who still put on your mask, maybe you could take it off so we could see your best smile. Yeah. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Okay, Fisip menyapa again. In three, two, one. Okay. Thank you very much to all of the audiences, the distinguished speaker, and all of the lecturer of the faculty of Sriwijaya University. Wow, it's a lot of picture. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of fun for this morning. And now we have come to our main agenda the international public lecture that will be moderated by our moderator, Mrs. Rindang Senja Andarini, MECOM. Okay, allow me to read her short bio first. Mrs. Rindang Senja Andarani is the lecturer of communication sciences major in Sriwijaya University. She pursued her master degree from Diponegoro University. She experienced it with a public speaking practices and media literacy. Mrs. Rindang also involved in various research, especially in social field. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please give a warm welcome and give an applause to our moderator. Thank you, Siva. Good morning, Vice Deans and all lecturers, all participants here. Over the past decades, gender mainstreaming has gained visibility at global governments. And we have the same hope that women can attain the same benefit as men from services provided through our PPP, Public-Private Partnership. And here today with us, in this beautiful Wednesday, Professor Yukiko Kuramoto, PhD, who will complete our understanding about gender mainstreaming and global public-private partnership. Here is Kuramoto Sensei. Ohayou gozaimasu. Selamat pagi. Please have a seat. Before Professor Yukiko Kuramoto starts her presentations, allow me to introduce her. Yukiko Kuramoto Sensei is a professor at the Graduate School of Social Design Studies and College of Sociology, Rikyo University. She earned her PhD in Political Science at George Washington University and taught at Earlham College and Miami University in the United States. Her main research interests are international relations, gender and development, and global governments. And without further ado, please, uh, Professor Yukiko Kuramoto, time is yours.
Selamat pagi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, it's my first time in Indonesia. I'm so excited, and then also I'm very um, impressed about your yellow jacket. It's a very bright and then so cheerful. <laughs> so I feel more welcome, and also I feel comfortable. You guys are here, and I really appreciate all and um, Professor Atar, and thank you very much, and Maria, Professor, thank you very much, and I hope we could have a good time here. And then also we will uh, have some partnerships and also we have a collaboration between uh, universities and also I hope um, you, uh, the students who come to Rikyo or in Japan to study together with us. It will be great. Thank you. <laughs> so let me start my uh, lecture. And uh, may I ask, yes? Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think I see my, my screen there. Okay, then uh, would you go next, please? Yes, um, thank you for um, uh, uh, introductions, and I don't have to add more information. Um, I'm, I am Japanese, but I had an uh, undergraduate degree in Japan, and after that I went to the United States earned two degrees, master degrees and PhD in political science. And after that, I taught the Arnhem College and Miami University, and I came back. So I've been there in the United States 21 years. So it's a long time, and I came back to Japan. So um, yeah, I'm, I look like it's pretty Japanese, but in my side, I feel like I'm half American because my idea and also my um, the, um, behavior is sometimes uh, like American. So please forgive me. <laughs> okay. So yes, um, I my focus my uh, uh, the special uh, interest it will be international relations. And today I would like to focus on gender and social development. And one of the case studies I will introduce, I hope you could um, learn from it and also you could be familiar with the gender mainstreaming, the concept. I think it's very applicable and also I think it will be very useful in many different fields. Okay, next please. And today's uh, lecture and an outline, and I would like to introduce the Rick University first. And Again, we already shown that short movie on uh, Rikyo, but like, uh, maybe some people missed it. So please uh, allow us to show that short movie about Rikyo. And after that, I would like to introduce our program, Master Degree of Social Development and Administration. We just started in last year, so I'd like to introduce. And after that, I would like to have a lecture. And Q&A from you. Okay, so would you please show that short movie about Rikyo, please? Welcome to Rikyo University. Rikyo University was founded in 1874 by American Bishop Channing Moore Williams as a small private school teaching English and Bible studies. Today, Rikyo is known as a leading liberal arts teaching and research institution and has a good reputation for quality English education. The main campus is located in central Tokyo. The nearest station, Ikebukuro, is the third busiest station in the world where students can enjoy the excitement of living in Tokyo. There is another campus located in Niza, Saitama Prefecture, which is about 20 minutes from Ikebukuro by train. Bikyo enrolls about 20,000 undergraduate students, 1,200 graduate students, and 1,000 international students from 50 countries.
Bukyo has 10 undergraduate colleges. Global Liberal Arts Program, GLAP, is a new advanced four-year undergraduate program to educate future global leaders through liberal arts. GLAP offers bachelor's degree courses taught entirely in English. There are 14 graduate schools. The Master of Public Management and Administration, MPMA course, is an English medium two-year master's program, which is particularly designed to learn to analyze and manage various policies programs effectively. Rikkyo University has been selected for one of the top global universities in Japan by the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. As of 2018, about 1,000 international students studied at Rikkyo. We aim to double this number by 2024. We expect all the students would have overseas experience while at university by 2024. The Center for Global Human Resource Development provides unique cross-cultural programs to cultivate future global leaders. Rikuzen Takata Project is a collaboration program with Stanford University, the University of Hong Kong, and National University of Singapore. Rikyo is well known for its beautiful campus and substantial facilities. Rikyo University is a pioneer in global education and continues to be committed to academic excellence. dinner and I ate there already and then freshly baked naan was the halal kaf, I mean kale and then it's a very tasty then if you would come to uh, Rikyo to study you could eat there so you don't have to worry about to find the restaurant in Ikebukuro you'll be on campus you could eat okay and next please Next, I would like to introduce our new program, Master of Social Development and Administration, MSDA program. We just started last year in September. And it's a more but open and also global uh, the program. And it's designed to equip students with research skills essential for being a future leader in government and in international organization, business and NGOs and, and all that. And students will receive the academic and research training through uh, required and elective coursework and pr uh, process of this writing. Uh, would you please uh, to the, uh, the um, online, the MSDA program uh, site please? Okay, um, 
maybe <laughs> would have changed the picture. Yes, this is the student from last year. Uh, we have uh, students from everywhere in the world. Like uh, you see uh, Gambia and Burundi and uh, Namibia and uh, Samoa and China and Mozambique. Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and we have uh, nine more students this year. And nine more students from like uh, Mozambique and and also um, eh? <laughs> Tanzania and Tonga, China, Indonesia, India, and uh, Honduras. So what I'm saying is, if you come to join us this program, not only just studying in Rikyo, but also you could extend you, your networks in global level because Africa, Asia, and, and North America because Honduras and, and North America side and South America. So see it's that we have a global studies and expanding global networks. Then I think it's a great opportunity for not only for uh, foreign students but also for Japanese students. So we are enjoying studying all students from the global level and then in the world, we are really happy and then we are studying a lot now still. Thank you. Um, could I, yeah, just, uh, no, I'm sorry. I want to have a, one more uh, picture from this side. Yeah, just I want to show our dean. I think, yeah, yes, thank you. Yes, um, Professor Osa, there. Professor Osa is like our dean. So um, she is a, a specialist of human security. And she also uh, part of the uh, energy, international NGO helping uh, refugees. And I would like to introduce her. And of course, she wants to be here by herself. But uh, instead of her, I came here. So I want to introduce her and also um, Again, I would tell her how you guys are so welcome and to us, and also um, thank you for coming. And then again, I think she'll be happy to hear all of the what I had experienced here. Thank you. Next, please. Yes. Okay. I think uh, yeah, I done that. And next, please. Yes. And. Uh, to uh, introduce what kind of coursework you could uh, take for the degree program. It's a human uh, security and justice and population and migration and refugee issues and disaster risk management. And uh, also uh, you could say that not only just the global issues but also uh, some special issues and social development, sustainable education, gender equality and disability, and inclusion, and corporate social um, responsibility and philanthropy and ethics. So, so many uh, different uh, the ideas and also uh, knowledge you could earn for this degree. Next, please. Yeah, this is the, what I want to show you, that we have a 16, uh, to, I mean, students now. So all over the world, you could see. And, and also, if you be in our program, you will make friends in the world. So I want to make, uh, com um, emphasize that. Next, please. OK. I want to move on to uh, the, my lecture about gender mainstreaming and global public private partnerships and why this global partnership is important because as I said here and um, global partnership is defined as, as it's saying it's multi uh, stakeholder partnership including all the, the actors and my uh, special area in international relations. And international relations always has been uh, used or focused on the 
nation state. Nation state is a, a very important actor. However, in this globalized world, not only nation states, but also other actors are very important, including international organizations and NGOs, and um, especially for the uh, multinational corporations too, and individual and foundations. All the actors are uh, important, and also we get, get together to work for the global issues. It's something I want to say and I want to focus on. Next, please. This is that you know the sustainable development goals. You have 17 goals, as you know. And all the uh, issues are all connected and also important to, to everyone. You see, like, the, you know, uh, poverty or hunger or the, again, um, And all the issues is very global. It means only nation states cannot solve this problem. We need to get together, work together to find a solution. That's why global uh, public and partnership is very important. The global PPPs is necessary it's true to our future in global level. Next, please. And especially, i like to introduce a couple of uh, the examples. It's Gavi. It's Gavi is one of the very successful global PPPs. Why? It's because it's, um, as again, it's COVID-19. We have a pandemic. We need all vaccination in the global level, and then yes, we need uh, all the uh, international collaboration. And this is before the COVID-19. We had this uh, Gavi, it's the global PPPs, actually promoted the vaccination in developing countries. So this is like a very uh, significant public-private partner, public partnerships, and then also try to uh, extend to provide uh, vaccination to the uh, developing country. Next, please. That four main actors are introduced here. Bill Melinda uh, Gates Foundation is on also uh, WHO, the World Health Organization, and UNICEF and the, the World Bank. They are the main actors to organizing it, especially uh, Gates Foundation is the key actor. So Gavi is very internationalized, and this, yes, it's true as before, but in this case, global PPPs, not only international organizations, but also foundation. Actually, the more likely Bill Gates, individual, he is rich, but again, he tried to do, uh, to contribute to the global society. He is trying to promote that vaccination in the in different country. So this is like that world size global PPPs. And then one of the uh, example of the successful uh, things. And next please. And next. I would like to introduce, this is the U.S. version. So U.S. Uh, has the U.S. Agency for De International Development, also the, some scales and also framework for global PPPs. It's called Global Development Alliance. So DGA is actually started in 2001, and I have been researched, and also I've been to United States, I talked to the people, me interviewed people, and then especially for the gender issues, and because my concern, again, it'll be, I'm not gonna talk about too much today, but um, the PPPs is great framework, but if the public, 
not only public but also private partner will be joining. It means private partners, uh, company, corporations. It means they may like to extend or try to increase profits. Then if profit is a more priority and they may hinder or they may uh, not really pay attention to other issues like human rights issues or gender issues. So I went there to do research on the programs and also the people be in so that how you accommodating because uh, this is Global Development Alliance is the one is the kind of uh, inviting all the private sectors to apply for it and then how they do is just uh, not only just uh, giving expertise but also USAID giving the fund and of course one to one uh, ratio means yes it's half as USAID and half pri I mean public uh, private uh, companies pay for it. Then they try to get collaborate and then they try to do have a sustainable de business de uh, design. And then uh, the especially important is the market oriented approach. So market means like uh, if you have some issues then again we have been working so hard to uh, solve or do, do tackle of the developing countries issues but again still we have a lot of issues still left. And how to deal with that issues? USAID is asking private partners to join in to find out how we could do it with financially and also their ideas. And, and they will, uh, again, to uh, USAID has uh, offices everywhere in the world. So they have all experiences on the staff and also that like, local staff could help. That's why it's a global the development alliance, GDEA, is a very important some scheme and also some project for not only USAID but also global uh, partnership. Next, please. And this is the uh, the, the the picture the uh, the global development alliance home homepage is showing. So it's not I made it. Um, this is the thing, it's business interests and also USAID. And USAID obviously tried to uh, solve all the issues, climate change, uh, uh, the clear water, and then all the issues of developing countries. And then business partners are seeking, of course, profits and also, again, uh, uh, social, con I mean, social contribution too. But, um, this is the opportunity for uh, PSE. It is the word that uh, USAID is using, but this is like a, the creating shared value. It's the same thing. A doctor, uh, that Michael that Porter from Harvard Business School actually initiated. So he was saying is that Professor about Porter was saying poor business-wise because it's they need to expand the market, definitely has to go to the market in maybe middle income countries and also developed countries to uh, go to the new market. To do so, they need to create new value on local level so that it's win-win uh, the relationship. So that uh, business could have a sustainable profit profitable business model and also the uh, USAID actually could uh, make the very sustainable development project implementation. So this is the, again, creating um, a shared value concept. It has been very um, important and also I think it's globally that uh, Professor Porter's book was sold and also read for uh, business, uh, public administration people and also business school students read and also studying and also practicing. So please make sure this, this concept also may be valuable for you too. So please remember that not just opportunities for PEC, uh, creating shared value, the concept. Next please. Yes, it's just a for example. If we have some issue and one of the case study I would talk about today is the nutrition improvement pro uh, uh, project. 
for example, if we have a project, and then if you, for example, this time I will talk about Ajinomoto. Ajinomoto is the first company, Japanese company, applied for the USAID, then got the, this deal. And actually, we have in Japan, we have a, a 48, and then we have a public a private partnership program. However, Japan is just uh, asking only Japanese private companies to apply for it. But USAID asking global, which means not only US, but also other countries' uh, private partners could uh, join, and then you could create a new framework. It's just something I will talk about. This is what I'm saying is, for example, Ajinomoto, apply for this GDA, and then, um, for example, foundations and multinational corporations and international organizations, and I see, um, yeah, uh, yes, government and uh, NGOs. All that level of that partners could join. And it's a very, uh, it's scale-wise, it's pretty big, and also various uh, actors could get together. And then diversity is important, as you know, because if you want to do something new or something it's never solved, sub, never didn't do well, you need a new idea, new like innovation, something. Then if you have a more actors, more people, more like a different backgrounds, would create new idea or maybe introduce something different. It's something we need in the world. Next, please. So uh, I want to uh, talk about one case study of Ghana. And in Ghana uh, had uh, a lot of issues. It's one of the issues is uh, kids, uh, very child, it's a small babies, malnutrition problem. And malnutrition is stunning, we call. And uh, if you have that, uh, that yes, we, you're born in a baby, and then again, it's, um, mother could take up a little bit, but after that, they use portrait. You could see this uh, the picture. Portrait is like a very uh, corn, uh, some oatmeal type thing that they will use to feed the baby. But this is a very good local, good um, uh, the food for baby, but it's not nutritious enough. So if you add some supplement, like it's called cocoa plus, because portrait is that little uh, baby's food, it's cocoa. So Ajinomoto put the name of cocoa plus. So that cocoa plus is powder if you get such, and then if you add the, uh, the uh, publish, and then if the baby could eat, get a more uh, multi, like vitamins in it. And what they are saying is that mal mal uh, malnutrition is a very uh, severe, a damage on baby's brain, also uh, growth. That's why up to maybe like a um, very early stage of the baby, you need a good nutrition. Then this is the Cocoa Plus will help. That's why Ajinomoto and also a Ghana a University, University of Ghana, has got to do it together and then do research on and then create this, this supplement. This is the things that Ajinomoto tried to sell and also try to uh, achieve that sustainable development in Ghana. It's something, it's this uh, project I like to introduce to you today with gender concept. I will explain about how you use the gender concept later. Okay. Next, please. So yes, Ajinomoto is uh, yes, it's the one uh, trying to improve the nutrition in Ghana. And uh, Ghana is, again, this is the thing is that I already explained, so I move on next, please. Yeah, next, please. Yes, this is the uh, picture the, uh, the um, gain the international organization created. I'm sorry, not easy to see, but the Sustainability is here, and you see, okay, you see that public and academia and private and civil society, and how they do work together, it's a thing, it's like a public, and again, it's a USAID or Japanese government, Academia, it's like a Tokyo University or the University of Ghana or a private, again, Ajinomoto 
and also local, gov um, local company to create COCO Plus, and then civil society is NGOs or NP NPOs. Then get together to nutrition improvement project is created. It's a scheme I think it's important because uh, it's global level. Doesn't mean only not only a country, but also um, international organizations and Japan and also um, the Netherlands and, uh, and the US AID is US. So it's a global level partnership. Next, please. Uh, next, please. Yes. This is the uh, thing is just I try to explain. And this is the, uh, the also Coco Plus is private company's creation. But like WFP is already verified the efficacy of this pro I mean, the, uh, the product. Then they said that it's important and it's again affordable because it's 10 cents US dollar. It's a very cheap for one such. And it's desirable because it's, it's a local tradition that Ajinomoto pay respect for the tradition and then created something that local people could have a no hesitation to use and eat. Then accessible. They try to be accessible because if you're not accessible, nobody will try to buy it or try to use it. So the three things they would like to kind of focus on is something it's an important um, elements of this project. Next, please. Yes, this is like uh, the social business model. I hope I hope you know the social business, social business, uh, the model. I hope, I think it's like uh, the Grameen Bank or uh, Black in, in Bangladesh. They are very famous for a social business model. They created, and uh, Dr. Yunus was won the Nobel Prize for peace for that. And they use like a micro a credit to, uh, to help and also economic development in Bangladesh, especially for women. And social business model is not just a, a usual business, but also they saying is, yes, uh, business should not only just looking for seeking profits, but also try to uh, solve or contribute to the society. Maybe not only for local, but also the global societies. It's something they need. This social business oriented or business, uh, social business is also uh, needed for global level. Okay, uh, next please. Let me explain how many actors are in there. And then this is the, all the, for example, this is the program here. And you see, uh, I think it's almost 10 actors are in this program and globally. For example, you see R&D, research and development, and Japanese JICA, and uh, the, the government, and also uh, the uh, University of Ghana, and INF, and uh, this is the also And also plane, and also this is the international organization. ESN is uh, uh, the Dutch Netherlands the marketing company, and USAID is the uh, US government. And then CARE is the international uh, CARE international for women. So they are the international organizations for uh, girls and women. So they try to help that to achieve gender equality and gain and also for including kids too for the international organization and jhs is a, a ghana uh, the government the health department 
And Yan is the uh, local business. Local business is actually has a, a, a factory to produce this Cocoa Plus powder, the supplement. And DSM is also an international company and Ajinomoto. So all the companies are also available and also get together, work together to try to achieve this imp improvement of the nutrition in Ghana. And this is the thing is that they try to divide the work, uh, uh, production, education, and uh, sales. So other day, as I said, make the uh, Cocoa Plus, you need the uh, scientists, and also uh, the technicians, all that, and then R&D. And that's why it's JICA, and then University is also there. And then um, you have to produce. Then Yan is local business, a company is creating. And again, education is important, because if mother doesn't think that Cocoa Plus is important for their kids, a baby, they're not going to buy. That's why education is important. That's why International Organization for uh, Women is included here. And, and also sales, all the marketing, and then uh, also important. And I went to uh, the USAID and also Ajinomoto. And Ajinomoto uh, person told me, the interview told me uh, that uh, the Ajinomoto uh, people uh, were really introduced by not only just the, uh, the USAID's expertise, but also ESM and then other uh, uh, the companies to help out, and also local staff in Ghana. This is just something it's you will think that how uh, helpful for the Japanese company to go into Ghana to create new business. Next, please. So this is the whole thing. This is, again, it's a picture you could see how this like a project was also uh, created and also shared by partner. Again, you could see that making one product doesn't mean just simple thing. You need to create again and again, you know, the R&D and production, education, sales. It's a circle. So it's one only circle, but also circulate. Otherwise, you cannot make improvement, and also you can make a better business. So this is just only not only one time collaboration, but also continuous collaboration among the all partners. Next, please. This is the thing I made that doesn't look too good, but Excel, uh, the picture from the Ajinomoto uh, material. If you start that your own business, new business, you have to do everything. Right? So you have to R&D and uh, production and logistics and of course you have to uh, teach mother for that nutrition education and then you have to promote the, your product and then sales and customer need to be satisfied. All the process, if you start by only one company, private company and also in Ghana it means you have no like, uh, connections, you have no knowledge, you have no idea, and then nobody knows about Ajinomoto. So Ajinomoto is a very famous company, that food company in Japan, but the Ajinomoto is unknown company. So if that Ajinomoto had that old idea, however, not going to be difficult, it's not easy to start new business. That's why the Ajinomoto went to the USAID, tried to start new business, and brought all new actors. That you see that little uh, the, uh, different colors means if you have a more partners in the individual stage, you have a less work to do. It's very efficient. I know it's a partnership, maybe sometimes difficult. However, if you do everything by yourself, 
you have a lot of work. And also sometimes you lost because you cannot go to the Ghana or you have, cannot be, have a whole company in Ghana. It means you need help from local level. So that this is the system, the global partnership idea, the public partnership idea. It's actually help not only just private company to, to new start, but also locally Ghana people get a job too because they have the opportunity to work for this Ajinomoto there. And the factory making a new uh, Cocoa Plus is something they could do. So this is the things, their scheme. It's just a very efficient, but also very um, ideal for everyone. Next, please. Yes, an outcome. And so far, as I said, I think it's uh, originally started 2012. I, I think I started to interview and also follow the process and also I went to US and, and I have been continuous that to do research and I think it's that it took long time to have outcomes. But this is the outcome they had that 2018. Yes, it's a Cocoa Plus, it was, um, 9,000 children by in 2017, and 20,000 children it's got to reach this um, the product. So this is the thing is outcome wise, yes, they could help while well, they try to improve the um, baby's malnutrition problem. Next, please. However, there are other challenges. This is the challenges I like to uh, uh, introduce and also, yes, it's global, it's a very uh, ideal partnership, but the challenges are also there. One thing is like a distribution. And then a kiosk type means like they have a small stores and shops in the, uh, the, uh, the town, then they could sell that such. And you could have a kiosk, you could stop by and buy it. But again, it's not really reachable to the rural area. So again, if you don't have a distribution well, means you can have a logistic type in Ghana and rural area, of course, you can sell many. And also profitability is the biggest issue for this program. As Nomoto try to start and be more sustainable, but make it sustainable, it means some level of profitable. Doesn't have to be huge, but profitable. Otherwise you cannot really sustain. So then actually uh, still deficit. So it means like um, they need to have uh, more sales. For example, they saying 2023 target is like 300,000 children could eat or could use this Cocoa Plus, then will be no longer deficit. So it's that level they likes to reach. And this is the thing is the biggest problem and also behavior change. And yes, it's a very good for babies but if mother doesn't understand, or well, mother doesn't want to change their behavior, that Cocoa Plus cannot be used, or cannot be a very uh, uh, ef uh, efficiency or ef effective use to do this. So the behavioral change you need to focus on, mothers especially, and it was not easy to succeed. It's a challenge. It's also forming partnership is also important. As I said, very uh, unique and also many various partners in global level. Yes, it's very good, but again, how you could earn trust or how you could deal with that, uh, the people from different background. So it still have a difficulty and also how to communicate, maybe not gonna be easy. So this is the four different challenges they are facing. 
Okay. So, next, please. Yes. Yes, next, I would like to introduce the gender concept. Because if you use a concept of gender, you could analyze the projects or maybe public policies to, to see what is issues, what is maybe to need be uh, that to something we need to solve because something is hindering something in that process, right? So gender is just not this concept, but also could be tool or could be instrument to change or analyze something we have now. And let me uh, define the gender. This is the UN Women's uh, Gender uh, Concept. Um, and as you see, this is uh, more likely a gender in short term. The gender is a socially and culturally constructed and learn from the, the behavior or socialization in a, a childhood. So not just as born as like uh, the sex. You know, sex is like as you born, uh, male or female. But nowadays, even like uh, that, sex is not going to be easy to divide two uh, categories. So, but anyway, the gender is not just uh, two categories. It's so many different categories, you say. You know, the social and socially and also culturally constructed, that's why. And next, please. And the you already seen that sustainable development goals, the gender equality is the one of the 17 goals. And then gender equality is the here, and uh, if you want to apply to the gender concept in the developing countries the program, and then gender equality is one of the things you need to achieve through this development project. And then the gender equality is just not like a, a try to give that more opportunity for women. Not just uh, for that, focusing on just not only women, but also you see um, <clears throat> more opportunities for that many different uh, gender. It means maybe male and also maybe some handicapped people or maybe some people in the marginalized people in society. Marginalized people is always marginalized because that society forget, forget the people and also sometimes they really um, didn't pay attention to them. That's why they are marginalized. So gender equality, uh, the concept, is um, almost human rights issue. So the human rights issues means that people living in society should have equal opportunity for, to achieve or try to uh, expand their capability. It's uh, uh, Dr. Amartya Sen's uh, the concept, but again, it's human development. So gender equality is part of human development. And if you try to achieve that e gender equality in society, and not only for that women get a benefit, but also sometimes men get a benefit too. For example, in Japan, all men are working so hard for a long time. And they do, cannot go home until late night. If you keep that system like that, all mothers or like maybe women cannot really join that whole that Japanese working work some style. And then you know Japan is losing population and government is asking women to join to that, I mean, work together and then be in business. But if we keep that same style, no women or no mother could work as others. So if you bring that gender equality concept to the Japanese business model, how they do work, then actually less working time or maybe they have a flexible style of working. For example, the COVID-19, you could use online style, like home working, so that you could not, doesn't have to go to office to work.
to stay office until what, 9 p.m.? It's too long, right? For mothers, for example. So, if you bring that gender equality concept to the business working style, less maybe time, well, shorten time to work, maybe the flexibility for working style, then not only women or mother, but also father or man could benefit. So gender equality concept actually could improve the other people, maybe not just only women, but also other people, including men. That's why gender equality system concept is the tool to improve some human development and also our society. Next, please. And next is the uh, gender mainstreaming. Have you heard this concept before? Yes, yes, you heard about that before? No? Okay. It has been like almost 10 years though, like a UN actually um, promoting this concept. And then people asking, what this mainstreaming? And then always people asking what? So, that's what I think is I need to introduce to you to this uh, concept. And then gender mainstreaming is here, is that again, um, it's mainstreaming is, it's not this just the end, it's a strategy or approach or a means to achieve global gender equality. So mainstreaming is that simply you could define, you could put the gender concept, gender uh, viewpoints on each level of the project. It means when you could create some new idea as a project, you should think about an uh, gender. And then after that, you could have a proposal, make sure you have a gender approach, gender mainstreaming concept. The every steps, every processes, you need a gender mainstreaming uh, the approach so that every level, including implementation of the project, you could have a gender mainstreaming. And I think maybe uh, I should use the little short movie to understand the gender mainstreaming from, from you guys because uh, you're getting a little bit tired to listen to me. So I want to move to that uh, the little short movie from the European Institute for Gender Equality. Would you Sh I mean, sh use that short movie from the internet, please, about the gender mainstreaming on the website. Yes, this one. Would you please? Welcome to Acres Gender Ma Welcome to Acres Gender Mainstreaming Platform that will help policymakers integrate a gender perspective into their work. Gender mainstreaming brings a gender perspective into each phase of policy development, whether it be in sport, energy, or education. When integrating gender into policies, it is essential to take into account two main dimensions. The first is the gender-responsive content of policies. This means making sure that the specific needs and interests of women and men are equally addressed. In education, this could mean looking at how gender stereotypes might influence the subjects girls and boys choose to study. For example, boys are more likely to study information and communication technologies, while girls are more likely to study arts and humanities. These choices can affect future career opportunities and contribute to workplace segregation. The second dimension to consider is the gender representation in the policy areas. In education, it would be important to look at the proportion of women and men teachers and the proportion of women and men in decision-making positions at top levels in tertiary education. 
Gender mainstreaming is a cyclic process which starts from the defining and planning phases and continues through to implementation and monitoring and evaluation. The platform gives a comprehensive overview of the main methods to be used throughout the gender mainstreaming cycle. You can also find out how to integrate a gender dimension into different policy areas, such as poverty, health, the digital agenda, and many more. Country profiles show the status of gender mainstreaming in each EU member state. The gender mainstreaming platform can support policymakers to ensure that public interventions respond better to the needs of all girls and boys, women and men, ultimately bringing Europe closer to gender equality. Uh, this is uh, from the uh, European, U European Institute for Gender Equality. And you could see the whole steps, and then I don't know exactly you could see, but um, again, um, yeah, just uh, here is the, is the implementation plan and all that for the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the project cycle. And then you could Gender budgeting is also important, you know, because sometimes people have a budget. Budget is very important for that in you know, creating some new project. But like, if you have a gender in mind, they may forget some of the, some of the money you need. So gender budgeting is a very important part of this gender mainstreaming uh, the idea. And it's also gender monitoring and gender statistics. Again, uh, if you have a good statistic to see the objective idea, objective observation of that, the, what is going on at the local level, you need to make attention. And also, uh, gender analysis, by the way, it's the one thing is always uh, very important because, for example, uh, if you have uh, that development project in developing country, for example, and then that unconscious bias about gender, especially maybe Japan, but people think men it should be working outside, doing maybe uh, agriculture, uh, farming, all that, and then women stay home cooking or raising kids. It's a stereotype. It may be some unconscious bias. Then people think that way, then they create a new development project then if you bring it local level, doesn't work, right? Because for sometimes you, you could see sometimes that, that women, mother are working at the field, doing agriculture work, right? Raising vegetables or raising key, I mean the corn or uh, the weeds. Then men is going to city to get a job and then get a money back. It's just things maybe happening in developing country. And also, um, if that, for example, JICA or Japanese development agencies uh, bring people to have a training or educational some seminar. But if only send only male that, you know, expertise that, and that, uh, the, uh, the people, the officers to teach or educational seminar, that maybe some religious or some the cultural uh, the background hindering the opportunity too because if the only male officers all the uh, the knowledge cannot be reached to the women because women cannot come to the seminar because the male officers only there so that we need more female officers or female project uh, leaders to be there to help out the uh, uh, women too. So things like that, just uh, not only in developing country, but we have unconscious bias about gender 
It's always there, and sometimes you we behave, and also you say something, obviously some hurting people, and also hindering the efficiency or implementation of the project. That's why we need all that ma agenda mainstreaming, the concept to watch and also to analyze all processes of that project, and also public policy. Next, please. And this will be my final thing, and then so I want to go back to the Ajinomoto, uh, the, uh, the Ajinomoto, the, uh, the Nutritious Improvement Project. How you could apply the gender mainstream concept to analyze what is hindering or what is the, the, the challenges and how we could tackle on that project. And this is the thing, it's tentative, so again, it was not easy to reach out to the mothers. So as Nomoto found out, wait a minute, maybe for the health services that the government, uh, the Department of Health has uh, the health services in local level, how about nurse? So nurse is a very important critical actor to educate mothers and also some label uh, they have a very uh, the good knowledge on the baby so that mother could listen to them. So that, that as you know, realize to collaborate the, the Garner, the, the health department uh, people and then actually I met the, uh, the, uh, the bureaucrats at the, the African Development uh, Conference in Yokohama 2019, and then I heard that, that I actually I talked to the, uh, the health department officer, and how did you, uh, I mean, trust the Ajinomoto, and then how they decided to work together. And then she said, the Garner, you know, the health officer said, well, um, she said, like, well, Ajinomoto actually presented the scientific evidence and also how they could do well on the Ghana in the helping local people. They were very impressed about scientific evidence. So what we are kind of learning is not just the project, but also how you could communicate, how you could uh, work together with the people from different backgrounds, the evidence, scientific, some data is the key to persuade the people. So not only just for that policy paper, but also you talk to, or maybe you have to work for that different company in the global level. Yes, please do not forget that. The only thing you could count on the objective subject, objective data of evidence. You just cannot talk to the people, hey, I think this is working. I think something may well. But only thing you could count on is evidence. So do research on and then find out that very reliable data so that you could have the presentation based on the evidence. That thesis writing and so policy paper, evidence is very important. Otherwise you cannot really persuade your clients either. But yeah, and also so that as no one found out nurse, the nurse is the key actor. They found out the nurse is the, usually the female. So female nurse is helping the educating mother and also helping the, uh, the, the mother to continue to buy the pro products. It's one thing, it's the gender thinking because the, how the mother was educated means a gender mainstream concept is applied for it. And the networking, this is the network, so not only just um, selling like a kiosk type of shop, but they, as you know, to ask for that care international uh, the, uh, NGOs, because they already had some women network. So uh, as you know, could use that, utilize the network to, actually this is the sales women. Just uh, uh, we have a Yakult lady in Japan, knock the door, the private houses, hey, would you like to buy some? <coughs> So you have all sales women, then you could visit individual household to could sell this. It's easier. You don't have to go to shop. So this is also distribution process improvement. <coughs> I'm sorry. And also um, help. And then, um, yeah, I have that. Thank you. 
I just done. Thank you. Thank you. I'm start losing my voice. <laughs> so, international uh, care international already have that um, <clears throat> business plan for the women for uh, selling some stuff. They use that distribution logistics process to sell the Cocoa Plus too. So that not only just uh, um, <clears throat> using male, but also women as a salesperson. It's easier for mother to buy stuff too. This is also gender uh, mainstreaming concept helping out that challenging. <coughs> and also, <clears throat> U.S. AID contributions. When I went to uh, Ajinomoto to interview, <clears throat> I asked how U.S. AID helped that is Ajinomoto this project. And U.S. AID actually has been working on gender equality for a long time. They created some movies about the gender equality one on one. You could access to it. You could get a training. Everything is set. However, <clears throat> Ajinomoto never introduced the all US AID's gender equality educational stuff. So what I'm saying is US AID could utilize not only just local stuff or money, but also they could utilize how, I mean, the, the things they already had for training or gender equality program. They didn't utilize. And the Ajinomoto people said they were not introduced. So I'm saying is I didn't really say it, that USAID yet, but the government need to make sure to inform and also train the private companies to do uh, continue what the, for example, USAID done for the gender equality. It's something they are missing, I think. And also, as number of organizational issues, yes, they are uh, very uh, devoted to this Ajinomoto uh, nutrition improvement uh, project. But <clears throat> as I went to interview a couple of people, I never seen women. So I'm not saying it's women need to be there for the whole project. If you have a gender mind, it's fine. But I never seen anybody to working on this. So I feel like, uh, yes, we need more women, female um, specialists or working project managers need to be involved to think about how you could create managed partnerships. So my, my conclusion is that you have the new opportunity, new business style, everything. It may work well, but if you do not include gender mainstream viewpoint, you may miss, you may maybe uh, the facing some daunting, some problem in the future. So main, uh, gender mainstreaming concept actually help all the people in the all of the world. Next please. Karima Kashi, thank you very much. That's all for today, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentations. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to the question and answer session, but let me conclude some point from Professor Kuramoto. Professor Kuramoto said that business corporations need to involve gender equality, gender perspective, especially to respond um, maybe about health problems and many others. And maybe for all participants here or maybe from Zoom, 
if you are, if you have some questions, you can deliver in English or in Bahasa Indonesia. Yes, we have three participants here. Please. Mention your name and your question. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Atira from International Relations Department. I would like to know about the basic one, Professor. So you mentioned that uh, about the PPP or public-private partnership, but I would like to know, is there any advantage and then the, is there any limitation for uh, that partnership other than uh, other and ra rather than other uh, partnership? Maybe like the limitation uh, of using that partnership. And then I would like to know your opinion about gender equality or gender mainstreaming. How, uh, how, big, how big gender equality or gender mainstreaming affect uh, the development or sustainable development goals in the future? Maybe that is all. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's a global uh, par uh, public partnership and uh, partnership PPPs is actually new uh, idea. But again, we need the all actors in the global level to get together, work together. It's a benefit because you have a uh, more partners. It's better resources, including money and also knowledge or maybe some new ideas. It's a benefit. And also limit will be, again, if you have a more partnerships means maybe you have to deal with different cultures, different languages, maybe different um, uh, financial, uh, the finance budget cycle. So, so many things are different. You need to accommodate. And then I talk to the Ajinomoto people and also CARE uh, International uh, the, uh, NGOs people. They said, if you have that very good uh, commitment, for example, gender equality, and then CARE International, I mean, uh, the NGOs said, if Ajinomoto was serious about gender equality, CARE International, uh, the, uh, the, uh, CARE International yes, uh, the, uh, the NGOs didn't join. So Ajinomoto needed to make a commitment, make sure that not only make a profit that you know the business model, but also need to achieve gender equality. So it means that the commitment and also creating a trust is the key and also help all the gender issues in developing country and also in our society too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we continue to the next questions, we would like to welcome our Dean, Social or Political Science, Professor Dr. Alfritri MSI, and also Dr. Andreas Leonardo. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, the next question from Zoom, from Zoom's participant. Besides nutrition improvement project, are there activities to improve gender equality? How GDA designing activities based on gender perspective? And how Japan government implement gender mainstreaming on development program? This is the question from Mrs. Ratno Susilowati. Thanks for the questions. Thank you. What, what's the first one? The first one. The, what was the first question? Beside nutrition improvement project, are there activities to improve gender parity? Oh, okay. Wow, it's uh, so many things, I think. S um, hmm. Okay, uh, okay, let me think. But. Can be related to mental health. Health, health yes, health. and health issues, and. Issues. Yeah, and also, also, like, um, again, it's COVID 19, and then uh, you see that so many, uh, again, it's COVID 19, you know. This is a pandemic. It's attacking everywhere in the world. It's true. But like that disaster or a pandemic actually attacking marginalized people more. Sometimes it's, it's a pandemic is re revealing or that existed social problems 
if you have a gender inequality programs will be show up and also again in Japan. Um, uh, for example, COVID-19 hit Japan and we have a, still have a, a, like a suicidal rate is high in Japan. And the last year, actually, more women commit suicide. Yes, it's happened. It's usually men commit suicide in Japan, but I, that last year, more maybe that double that women that commit suicide. It because that we have uh, economic issues because pandemic hit the society and women are the irregular, that not this like uh, um, part-time job and the part-time job, I mean people lost the part-time job and then they couldn't live and then they couldn't raise kids and then single mothers couldn't take care of the kids then try to com commit suicide. So things like that, the pandemic and health issues actually could to bring like all the gender inequality uh, the issues. And then we need to really uh, attack, I mean, try to kind of solve these issues. Then we are working on. And, and the global uh, partnership uh, thing is like that. It's actually helping the women in the global level. Uh, UN women, it's, uh, really try to get a statistic on, for example, uh, domestic violence. And if you're looking at after pandemic started, domestic, domestic uh, the violence happened more. Number of that, it means that women need more sh shelter and also women more help. So that you and women try to a kind of seek out and also promote the old governments and the NGOs and the POs to help that all the women suffer from domestic violences. So it's a global uh, the PPPs actually helping out for the women, I hope. But still, we, uh, we have a lot of women in the world are suffered from that, that pandemic-related uh, issues. Thank you. Okay. And the next question is, how Japan government implement gender mainstreaming on development program? Oh, thank you. Um, yes, that Japan is try to, um, to, to promote gender equal inequality, I mean, uh, gender promote equality through this. And I see the statistics showing gender mainstreaming uh, project is increasing. It means gender uh, the targeted uh, projects increasing. But if I really closely looking at, and especially that uh, the, the public partnership, that project-wise, not too many projects are really focused on gender. So yes, they're saying, yeah, they have a, that white paper saying, yes, we are working on, and then we're increasing number of the project on the gender equality. But if you're looking at a little more closely, not too many. So, yeah, I think it's still <laughs> Japanese 28 program need me to focus on gender equality. Thank you. Thank you. Again, the next questions from participant here. Please raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> um, Mrs. Diana, I'm sorry, the student is faster than you. <laughs> okay, the, yeah, the student with classes. Um, actually, before I start my question, uh, I would like to try something in order to respect your culture. And as a thank you, because you have already flown a uh, long way from Japan, I would like to introduce myself in Japanese. Is it okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, please. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, actually, um, I'm from International Relation, under the Department of International Relation on the fifth semester. And moving on to my question, uh, as we know, because it has been broadcasted, it broadcasted internationally, the unfortunate event and accident that happened to the former Prime Minister of Japan, uh, Mr. Shinzo Abe. Uh, actually, first of all, I would like to give my deep condolences to um, the Japanese. 
And with the new transition that are happening right now, uh, with the new Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, how do you perceive Japanese current administration under Kishida leadership related to uh, the gender equality in Japan? Is there any differences um, between his administration and Abe's um, administration related specifically to gender equality policy? Thank you. Thank you for a good question. Yes. Um, well, it's my opinion. It's nothing much changed. And then uh, the Prime Minister Abe actually tried to promote the gender equality. I mean, like for example, they say that he's saying it's we should have like uh, that women in the society more and work more. It's like a big bright future for women. But um, seems to me, he just uh, brought the, some uh, policy saying, hey, we need more labor force. So women need to be in market, do work, because we are short of that labor, market, labor force. So yes, I think it's some opportunity, some uh, legal uh, the framework maybe changed, improved, but nothing much changed. And the current uh, Prime Minister Kish, I mean, Kishida has also tried to maybe uh, try to promote the gender equality, but so many things, economic issues, and also, again, yen is a very low now. As, as we have many different kind of issues uh, facing. So I don't think he has, a, a, he can afford to work on gender equality. I'm, I'm, I'm so sad to say it, but yes, I'm pessimistic about this. Thank you. Okay, the next participants. <laughs> okay, yes, please, Mrs. Diana. Okay, thank you, Mbak Rinda. Uh, yeah, good morning. I want to ask. Professor Yukito, sorry. Okay, um, I want to tell you that there's a women's study in University of Sriwijaya. So I joined the women's study for almost 20 years. And then um, in women's study, we have already promoted gender mainstreaming also more than 20 years. Uh, but still, there's a lot of homework for gender, equali gender equality and also there are so many resistance for gender equality. Okay, um, that's my information for you for the first time. And also I have a question about Ajinomoto. You know, Ajinomoto in Indonesia is very famous yeah. as, a, yeah. as a flavor or seasoning or yeah, michin on in, in Indonesia <laughs> using MSG. Okay, so my question, how come, so my question, how come it can be useful for the baby nutrition? <laughs> because in Indonesia, the factory is uh, a flavored factory. Did, did you get my question? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I think yeah. I got, thank you very much uh, for okay. your information okay. for your company, I mean, university. It's good yeah. to know you have a <coughs> women's studies, gender studies. Uh, yeah, women's that, studies that in program. Sriwijaya University. Yeah. That's good to know because, uh, you know, future research joint program maybe start from there because I'm focused on gender. <coughs> oh, yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. we could have uh, some uh, the hope. In the collaboration, yes, it's the future. And the, uh, the next to the, your question, <coughs> yes, uh, Ajinomoto, the seasoning is a flavorful, then amino, it's the little seasoning, but it's a flavorful, but not nutritious, I think. So the baby, I, I just didn't really pay, t I mean, didn't really c c explain well, but like a little more like vitamins and all that for that stunning. It's just a crucial vitamins, it's cocoa powder. Of course, you could eat, you could use the cocoa plus for everyone, but like for especially made for baby, and then stunning and malnutrition would hindering that brain that development and also that, uh, that <coughs> physical development. So help out. That's why it's focused on. And then <coughs> again, 
If Ajinomoto tried to make a profit, maybe they could extend some, like a, maybe not only Coco Plus, but also other things. But since this is a social development project, it means they know that Ghana is, is facing malnutritious problem for the baby. So that's why socially, uh, the social contribution wise, yes, they want to focus on baby, try to help. It's the same thing as Ajizomo to try to make commitment. Thank you. It's, it's kind of cereal contained with vitamin for babies. Yes, it's uh, for that poultry. It's just a cereal thing. It's just easy to eat. Well, I, don't, I never really taste it, but I, I, I don't know whether flavorful or not, but just uh, for the baby, so. Thank you. Yes. Okay, that is the answer, Mrs. Diana. It's different. It's not what we know, Michin, but it's kind of product of Ajinomoto Group. It's kind of powder. We can pour with water and maybe water. Yeah. The corn, corn, like the cereal, the little portrait. Is, uh, you, I, I, I had a portrait this morning at the hotel. Like cereal. Yeah, right? cereal. But cereal. it's a very, um, yeah, very sticky rice type yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. a very, it's smooth, smooth. <laughs> they get that, you know, um, porridge. Por porridge, yeah. porridge. Yeah, you, you bubur, eat for yeah, the bubur. breakfast. Bu I bubur think instant I kalau kita ya, Bapak Ibu. Yeah, we eat porridge. Okay. It's a baby, you know, yeah. it's about a comb. Okay, it's yeah. like that Ghana is comb. Yes. And it is for yeah. social development, so the price is affordable. Yeah. Ten cents, dollar each. Okay. Ten, 10 cents US dollar. It's pretty cheap. It's so affordable. So it's kind of social development from Ajinomoto group. Okay, the next questions we have participants from Zoom. Okay, but <laughs> the student over there raised his hand <laughs> so long. <laughs> so please. Yes. So many participants so excited with your presentations. Oh, okay, yes, okay thank you so much for the opportunity. So from your explanation about uh, Ghana Nutrition Improvement Project, it's really uh, inspired me and have new insight for me. And my question is more relatable for us in here. Did you have any advice for us in here if we want to create similar project to contribute sustainable development goals? Because uh, maybe some of us join organization and also uh, we want to uh, create a project to contribute to sustainable development goals. So did you have any advice for that? Thank you. Okay, maybe you can repeat your questions. Open your mics, please. Uh, okay, so my question is, uh, did you have any advice for us in here if you want to create similar project like a Ghana improvement, Ghana nutrition improvement project? So uh, if we want to uh, conduct or to uh, do project in our society or maybe in our environment, did you have any advice for us what we should do to improve in our society to contribute sustainable development goals? Well, maybe um, I, well, I think it's so many uh, options and also so many ideas. Maybe um, I'm really not sure exactly. It's because you are, uh, qu your question is pretty broad. But I will uh, introduce some case studies in Vietnam. And then if you have a s school kids couldn't really eat well, and then uh, Japanese and also other uh, global PPPs help out for the school lunch. So school lunch is helping for the kids also nutrition and education and also um, help out for the households. And then also education is important for the future because if you raise kids or give education, they could earn a lot and also could get a better job and earn more money so that 
maybe just school lunch, but if you have a school lunch, kids go to school, and also parents send kids to school. So just some kind of example. I don't, I'm not really sure. Maybe Indonesia, you may not need this, but something like that. Just a simple idea will help out for the uh, community. So I hope that that just uh, maybe little thing, but like would relate to the SDGs. We have 17 goals. All things are related and also connected. If you do something for yourself and also you write thesis or do project, will help out for the everyone in the world. So. I hope you do well in a global uh, society, and uh, I will do uh, wish you success in the future. Thank you so much. Uh. Okay, yes. Uh, Professor Kuramoto think that maybe Indonesia has different challenges and different problems with Japanese, but this is an advice from her that maybe likes a school lunch program. It's interesting, yeah. But yes. Okay, international is working on too, the, the included. So it means not only just the, um, uh, the NGOs, but also private company and also as public, public, yeah, and, and the public, public and also Vietnamese government is involved. So I think it's a global PPPs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And for participants. In Zoom, hello. Good morning. Okay, if you want, if you want to deliver your questions, you can raise your, you can raise your hand, and you can open your camera, please. And you can, yes, you can speak your questions. You can mention your question. Yeah. Pakai bahasa Indonesia juga tidak apa-apa. Okay, this is a question from Mrs. Yunindiawati, who joins in Zoom. Okay. Could you give us the gender roles in Ghana in the fulfillment of food family? I think we should have a perspective how to improving the role of women and men in developing countries to contribute and make not only in food security but also food sovereignty so family food not depend on food import but foreign country thank you The Ghana case, the Ghana case, I think it's like a food is available locally grown. That's why I think it's like they are trying to do, make sure that uh, <coughs> locally grown one. And then Ajinomoto actually didn't bring, I didn't use the imported food. The locally grown one only, the local one. So <coughs> again, uh, Ajinomoto was very careful about how they start a business. Not only just for the um, employing uh, the uh, local people, but also make sure they use the local grown, the you know food. It's because Ghana people always have uh, no trust on the imported food, and then uh, I mean maybe you too, you know, it's something from outside, maybe not really safe. So the uh, in Ghana, especially mother doesn't want to use anything imported. So that's why I think it's like a gender, a mainstream, 
viewpoint is important because mother is uh, very careful about how to feed, what to feed baby. That's why locally grown the corn need to be used for this production. Thank you. Okay, the last questions, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm so sorry, but okay. Yep, I can only allow one participants. Okay, um, Rinjani, uh, maybe you can <laughs> you can deliver your question. Ah, oh, Mr. Abdul Halim, no. Ibu Neng dulu. <laughs> Thank you very much, Arinda. Uh, my name is Neng Yanti. I master in gender <laughs> in uh, Indonesia University. Uh, my question about uh, as you said before, the Ghana issue is a uh, some atau uh, one of the case in gender program, but I don't uh, mention it is a gender uh, program because I see is the Bugana program nutrition is about uh, apa? Uh, the program is uh, about women, not a gender, as you said. Uh, before that uh, the gender definition is the relation about women and and men because i i saw the the the, the program nutrition in ghana ajinomoto is uh, like a, a welfare program so i think it's not a, a gender uh, as we know I, when we when we make the development gender mainstreaming in development, uh, there is a uh, three approach. Uh, one is women in development, and the 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 other is women and development and gender in development. Uh, women in development is about uh, women to make uh, to participate in development is not for for themselves not for women not for gender equality it is about a wo woman yeah, uh, so the the program the the development program is only about to 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 feel to feel a gender practice need, not gender strategical need to make uh, equality uh, how how could you uh, explain about it i think uh, in ghana is not a gender uh, gender uh, program it's about uh, women uh, and the second one indonesia have the policy gender responsive policy and budgeting but as we know uh, the the program the program is still tadi ya this is still see about women not the gender gender equality the program also we if, uh, we 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 ask the the governor or the um, Bupati, <laughs> Bupati, atau wali kota, uh, they said the gender equality is a PKK as about the program for children. Uh, I don't, I don't think it is about uh, gender equality uh, to itu gender mainstreaming in development. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the program is still about uh, women. Uh, the approach still use the women in development, not gender and development. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question.
Thank you, uh, uh, Takmakasi, uh, for the questions. Thank you. I try to understand your question. But <coughs> and, uh, the Ghana's like a nutrition improvement uh, program, yes, it looks like co uh, focusing on women, but also uh, babies are, could be any genderless. Any babies are uh, getting all the uh, benefits. And you mentioned about, I think it's the UN actually have a concept of that women in development used to be. And then it's focusing on only women. And then they don't help at all. And what I'm saying is just if you try to just, uh, for example, giving something <coughs> for the women, If we want to change some <coughs> women's attitude or something, that, that, that um, environment, you need to, to comprehensive view on the society or environment. <coughs> That's why uh, now UN actually has gender and development rather than women in development. So gender and development is the one we are focused on. Not only uh, looking or doing something for women, but also men and w w men and women and others need to be considered to change everything. So, what I'm saying is like I, I'm not really sure about the, your local government, the policy. But again, if you apply gender and development concept in your local government project or policy, will help and improve all that, uh, that results. And also, again, gender mainstreaming, the concept also uh, <laughs> maybe for not only for women or girls, but also should give benefits, a good help, maybe make everyone happy in everywhere, I hope. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I realize that there are still so many questions, but unfortunately, this is the end of our sessions. Thank you very much for your active participation. And thank you very much for a very fruitful and insightful presentation. Thank you. Makashi. I had a good time. Thank you. I hope good, you have a good day. And then hopefully I will see you in the future. I'm back, and also I hope, I don't know, your friends, your, uh, your maybe uh, your brothers or sisters could come to Japan and join Rikyo University's program in the future. Thank you very much. Tamakashi. Thank you very much, Professor Kuramoto. Okay, I give back this, the next sessions to MC. Thank you very much. I'm Rindang Sanjaan Darini. All right. Thank you very much for our moderator, Mrs. Rindang, and our distinguished speaker, Professor Kuramoto, for bringing us to a very productive session for today. And I hope you found the presentation and this conference are informative and very helpful. But before we are moving to the closing section, we would like to invite the Dean Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, Professor Dr. Alfitri MSc, the Vice Dean of Academic Affairs, the Associate Professor Dr. Azhar, and Dr. Rania Saputra, 
MSE to be on stage to hand over or give some kind of souvenir for our keynote speakers. Oh yeah, for Professor Kuramoto, Mr. Um, yeah, you could please be on stage. Yeah, it's quite complicated to wear, but still it's a very beautiful song cat for our Professor Kuramoto. Please give an applause. Okay, thank you very much. And the next souvenir, we are going to give some kind of souvenir for Mr. Otake that will be given by... <laughs> It's a very beautiful jemputan for Mr. Otake. Yeah, hope you love that one. Okay, the last souvenirs for Dr. Insinyur Dida will be given to, will be given by the Dr. Rania Saputra. Okay, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would love to invite all of the audiences to have a photo session again, even, <laughs> yeah, we already had a lot of photo in the first place, but still, uh, we would love to invite all of the lecturer, the dean, and the vice dean to come to the stage with our keynote speakers as the, and distinguished guests to have a photo session together. Oke, okay. Bapak Ibu sekalian boleh silakan maju dan mengambil posisi masing-masing. And to all of the audiences who attend this event on Zoom, you could please do on cam because we are going to take a picture with you too. Yeah. Okay, the audience is on Zoom. Please do on cam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are going to take a picture in three, two, one. Okay, once more. Three, two, one. Okay, another photo with Fisip Menyapa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, in three, two, one. Yep. Okay. We're still going to take a picture, ladies and gentlemen, through phone. Three times, okay? Give your best pose and best smile. In three, two, one. Okay. Visit <laughs> menyapa. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you very much. You could please have a seat. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you could please uh, have a seat before we are moving to the next agenda is the closing session. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here are the closing session. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on the behalf of the International Public Lecture Committee, we would like to say thank you very much for your active participation for today. And we really hope that we could meet again perhaps in the next event and may all of you have a nice day i'm shifa safira wulandari your master of ceremony for today thank you wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh